Hi everyone, welcome to today's edition of the Student Athlete Interview Initiative. I'm Katie. I'm Emily. And today we have our special guest, Caroline Esmond. She just recently graduated from the George Washington School of Business. She played lacrosse with myself. She was my roommate. Um, she studied marketing and had a minor in organizational sciences. So Ez, why don't you tell us about what you're currently doing? Um, yeah, just kick it off. Yeah, so right now I am, as of this June, I'm working full time for a company called Zaft America. It's like a um, defense subcontractor. So we uh, manufacture energy solutions and batteries for space and defense applications. So our batteries go in uh, fighter jets and ground vehicles and some of NASA's uh, space satellites and all different kinds of those kinds of applications. Um, and I'm a technical writer for them. So I do a lot of proposal work, a lot of work with uh, our R&D and scientists to write procedures for the batteries that we build. That's really interesting. So like I could definitely see how marketing would be really important, an important skill to have when doing that technical writing. So could you talk a little bit more about how you decided to, you know, use your background in marketing to help you in this kind of career? Yeah, so um, technical writing is a, is a little more internally based, I would say, whereas previously I had interned for this company as a marketing intern, so we're doing a lot of customer facing end application kind of work, whereas technical writing, it's kind of the everything before that comes before the end application. So, um, but regardless, of either position with marketing and technical writing, you're writing for a specific audience. And so basically what I have to do um, for the technical writing is take technical information from our R&D department, engineers, scientists, and communicate it in a way that our customers can read in terms of proposals um, that they can read and understand that, you know, the average human doesn't always understand all the science and technical parts behind everything. And that's something I'm still learning definitely as well too. Um, as I also think as just as men, sorry, we're abbreviating nicknames here, but being on your team and watching you kind of do that translation for other players is something that you don't realize you've had these skills for so long, like explaining a new defense to five freshmen or first years and having to translate that into simple language. And that's basically what you're doing just for scientists and for normal people at the company. So I think that's really yeah. cool. It's like, I guess it's kind of both seeing like the big picture and then also being detail oriented. And I feel like that's how I was on the lacrosse team and as a teammate and trying to, again, help my teammates in that sort of way. So it's, a similar kind of way of explaining things to to another person, I guess you could say. Yeah, for sure. So um, you had mentioned that you interned at this company two summers um, prior to beginning full time. So going into that kind of like initial application and interview, um, what was like some of the things that you thought were important to highlight about your student athlete experience as a lacrosse player when trying to like convey a certain set of skills to whoever was interviewing you or reading your application? Yeah, uh, I think, so I interned for the marketing internship. Um, and I think, you know, with marketing communication is, is huge. My, my boss was, or is the director of um, marketing and communication. So she does both within the company. Um, and so I think just being a student athlete, being on a team, learning how to communicate with, and being on SAC too, um, learning how to communicate with, you know, senior staff and uh, coaches and teammates and all different, even professors and that kind of stuff through, um, through just regular school. Um, it was definitely helpful and it was a skill that I really tried to emphasize in my interview as well as time management. I feel like that's always a good one, time management and the ability just to be organized. I think that's something that's really valuable and what people want in an intern is to be able to not only handle all the things that are thrown at you, but to be 
um, to get it done in a timely manner and to be self-sufficient. That was another, um, another thing that my boss was really looking for was someone who could kind of just, she could throw projects at and someone who could just figure it out as they went along. Um, and that I feel like is a lot of the times what happens in, in, uh, sports or anything that, you know, I think we work pretty independently and we have a lot of things going on in our schedule that we have to um, plan out. And that's something that we get really good at pretty quickly. Yeah, I completely agree. So what specific um, things do you think that maybe from the workplace that you didn't realize you were doing because of lacrosse, if that makes any sense? You kind of just touched on three things, but if you could kind of elaborate things that you didn't realize until now that you're a full-time employee because I know internships you're only really doing it for 10 weeks in the summer or on breaks but now that yeah. you're really no longer an athlete are you like okay wow this is my life for the next couple of years this is I'm the way who I am because of lacrosse or student athlete if you want to elaborate on that a little bit yeah I think um something that has been an adjustment for me is that the role that I'm in now is more of a support role so um, I feel like as a student athlete, whether it's on your team or in the classroom, you're kind of just like the, or at least my experience was like, you're kind of just always doing things. Like I started all four years playing lacrosse too. So I hadn't really been in that support role, like on the sidelines, that sort of thing. So the transition to now being in a support role for the rest of my team members has definitely been a transition. Um, I've found myself like, I think we work, I have worked very efficiently in getting stuff done, but then it, there comes these like lulls in the work that it's, um, it's hard to not have something just like one after the other after the other and to kind of have my own um, project to work on because I work with program managers, so they all have their own programs that they're working on, whereas I'm kind of supporting each of them separately. So I think that was a big adjustment, um, just constantly having to reach out to them, seeing what they needed, um, as opposed to kind of having my own, like, thing, you know, if that makes sense. Like, I, I have to kind of rely on others, I guess, to get, to get my work, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think also kind of the same transition you have when you're a senior in high school and you go to being a freshman in college and going from this senior in college kind of big dogs, leaders on the field. And it doesn't mean you won't be a leader in your workplace, but you do kind of have to readjust and say, okay, I'm going to soak a lot of this in and help as much as I can, but I'm not the one who's really calling the shots anymore. Um, right. You're being that supporter role, which I think is a really nice thing that we haven't heard from many of these interviews yet, um, which is really, really cool to hear. Yeah, it's like, it's like being a freshman again, like you walk on campus or you walk into your office and everyone else there kind of knows what's going on and, and how things work and who to go to when you need a specific thing. And that has, you know, I had some of that experience because I had interned there for two years, which has definitely helped with the transition. Because if I had been completely new to this company, I think it would have been a lot more challenging to adjust because you just, it's just a totally different, different um, environment from what I've been in the last four years. Yeah. And kind of like when you were saying that, what came to mind for me was being on a team, such a big aspect is just general respect and like respecting those around you and having self-awareness to be like, when you're a freshman, knowing that your seniors are going to just know more than you are playing out. Like they're going to know about campus. They're going to know about like kind of the style of play that the coach likes and things like that and being you know vulnerable enough to be like hey like I don't know as much as these people like but I'm gonna do my part like as much as I can and you know surpass expectations but also take time to really like observe and learn from them I think that's so important and I'm so happy that you brought that up because like Katie said that isn't something we heard from any of our other interviewees yet so just to kind of close things out um what is the biggest piece of advice you would give to student athletes now who are either looking to start an internship or a career 
um, whether it's just like preparing their, how to prepare their application or like how to network or what skills to develop, just what do you think the biggest area is to focus on? Um, so, so this is, Katie knows this, this is a big pet peeve of mine. I would say when you're interviewing or when you're working in an office or doing whatever, making calls, blah, 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 blah you know, whatever it is, um, don't overuse likes and ums. That is like my, and I say it now, but <laughs> that is one of my biggest pet peeves. And I think it's so, it happens so often with kids our age, especially in high school and college. And the sooner you can get rid of that kind of language, um, it definitely just, I think it makes you seem more professional. It makes you seem more confident and and your speech is just a lot clearer and it helps convey the messages that you're trying to get across more. Um, that's something that my parents have always been on me about. And it's definitely something that I've noticed um, that I've been aware of as I've been, you know, went through college and had gone through these interview processes. And it's still something that I even see with adults in their thirties. Well, I would say twenties and thirties at my work. Um, I hear that a lot in, some of the younger people at my office and it's noticeable and it stands out and it's not and I think unless you're aware of it you don't realize you're doing it right. um that's a huge piece of advice from me <laughs> so Emily and I when we were mentors we actually did an entire lesson on this and they kind of taught us to say instead of saying um 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 just to take a breath and I think people forget to do that in interviews I know I catch myself talking a mile a minute and <laughs> my brain needs to slow down my words need to slow down even more than that and I think people may feel that they're talking very slowly but they're actually talking very clearly and concisely yeah. when you are talking very slowly and if you are stumped for a second you can always tell the interviewer do you mind if I think about that for a second instead of just starting your answer right away because they would rather you think about it than just pull something out of nowhere that doesn't make any sense yeah so they, and, it, and it helps because when you can go into an interview when you practice it and then you can go into an interview knowing that you're not gonna reuse those things over and over again it just makes you more confident and it makes you sound like an adult even though we are adults we're like we're still kids in terms of the office world and the work world, we're young. So it just, I think, can give more confidence to the person that's hiring you as well um, to know that you're mature and professional and can handle yourself in front of other colleagues and customers or whoever it is that you'll be speaking to. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that's such great advice and something that you can really just start now, like just start being aware of. It's not something that you need to have, you know, embedded in you from the time you're five. You can start today. So Even I think that's such great phone advice. calls, like calling your parents. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's such good advice. I'm really glad you said that. So uh, thank you so much, Caroline, for being with us today. We really appreciated all your insight. Um, we hope you all enjoyed this video and be on the lookout for more. So thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, thanks.